Good morning, happy Tuesday, gorgeous day. We're entering the time of year when we don't have to hope and pray there's a good day. It's often gorgeous, the weather, the universe gives us sun, everything's green, and I don't know about you, but even when I walked down the street, I smiled to myself because every single corner I see something beautiful I've forgotten since last year at this time. Today's reading from the Daily Om is Power in Numbers, sending our collective light into the world. Like tiny ripples that form good waves, great waves, combined human intent is worth more than the sum of its parts. Think about the word community. A single individual can initiate worldwide improvement by emitting conscious frequency of love or actions, beauty, goodness, and wisdom. But a group of people focusing that same energy on sending light out into the planet can stage for positive global transformation. So beyond the sending the light out and the positive energy and all that, is the action of a community is a lot more impactful than one person. But what is a community? It's a collective of individuals. All of us possess the ability to channel love energy, to heal, to be a conduit for white light and positivity influence our fellow humans from afar. So for me, the idea of emitting white light and love is too invisible. But think about what happens when you walk down the street in your own community. If you smile at one person and say hello, maybe then like begets like. They'll go on to somebody else and it will just continue. Um, and before you know it, you're still smiling, so are all the people. So it can be a, a measurable, more tangible version of what we're talking about. Mother Earth would quickly be, uh, yet yeah, one person can only do so much. Imagine if we each took a few moments at the start of our day to send light from our hearts to the world or action. Mother Earth would be quickly eased and the planet as well as every organism and being on it would be bathed in loving radiance. The world would be an infinitely beautiful place. You can help bring about an Earth where love triumphs over violence, air and water nourish in their purity, and people take pleasure in being alive. Alone, the light you emit is a wonderful healing tool, but when you join with others, again, think of community and action. Um, when you join with others to, with the intent to shine compassion and positive energy over the globe, a powerful force is created. Your collective consciousness and culminative light, culmin, cumulative light, will wash over the planet, enveloping people, communities, cities, countries, and continents. Inviting others to do this with you can be a beautiful thing if handled delicately. People may question the benefits of sending light to an already broken world. And um, think about that, the whole glass half empty, glass half full. If we just assume this is a broken world and our hands are tied, it will remain a broken world. But if we go forward thinking I can collectively change through my thoughts, my actions, my deeds, in my own corner, that will spread. Think of that whole um, concept when they talk about one monarch butterfly flapping its wings on its own, but when collectively they do it, it can cause a measurable um, shift on the planet. I don't know how I feel about that, but we'll see. People might question the benefits of sending light to a broken world. You will likely need to explain that each person's light joins together and through the joining of an all are strengthened. Assure them that it's not the technique used, the religion practice or the beliefs, but the intent. And when you think about um, if you drive down a street and there's only one city light, still a dark street but when you drive down a street and there's every city light is on every store light is on and then all the car lights are on it's now technically light pollution haha uh -huh. um but by itself one light is nothing multiple lights which are us creates the light and the illumination that we're looking for and many people come in mindfulness come in mindfulness to send their collective light oh, as more people come in mindfulness to send their collective light to the world the power of their planetary gift will increase exponentially. You may already be affiliated with groups who would gladly participate in such a noble project. Children who often feel incapable of influencing the world, yet are a reservoir of innate power, are usually enthusiastic about sharing the collective light, especially if it's an actual light, like a flashlight, a candle, a light on your phone. As you gather willing, ga as you gather willing people together, your individual intent will become a great and powerful wave and you will see the results in your humans and news. So that's a pretty heavy um, concept, but I want you to take that and kind of pick what you think out of it. Do you think that on a smaller level you can talk about the light in your own neighborhood, in your home, on your street, with your friends? And what does sharing light, what does that mean to you? Everyone's different. Okay, today we got turtle 
One of my favorite animals in a lot of indigenous cultures, it represents um, Mother Earth, the whole interconnectivity. And quite often the back of a turtle, especially in Canadian indigenous cultures, there is a belief that every single animal of the animal kingdom is kind of represented on there. Stop trying to make something happen. Retreat. To me, that sounds a little almost like giving up, but what I want us to do today is let's do inward poses. So we're gonna do poses where you get to go inward to gather your strength so you're ready to celebrate the light in your community. There's not a whole lot you can do right now to influence. Oh, see, this is completely opposite of what we just read. So I'm gonna read it. Actually, I'm not gonna read it. It's all about futility. It's a complete, normally our cards align, but today they don't. Okay. We are gonna focus on inward focused poses, going in, and quite often those poses involve a lot of stretching. Um, and quite often our back body's really tight. Even though we're often hunched forward in our daily activities, we're gonna take that to the next step further and make it with intention, not just because of our habits. Hey Google, turn music down. I'm so excited because what we're listening to is Olaf Arnoldson, uh, an isolated composer I love, and it's, I guess it's considered modern classical music. We use it a lot in our classes. If you Google Icelandic ambient music on um, Spotify, that's where I found it. It might be on YouTube too. And he's coming to Canada to Roy Thompson Hall tonight. So I'm very excited to go see that. I can imagine it'll be a very moving concert. So starting on the mat, let's start where it all began. Slowly lower down. We're gonna take a few breaths and constructive rest. Arm by your side. Let's take palms down. Because remember today's theme is going within. Notice the soles of your feet, the texture of your mat, and the two coming together. Press all the toes down equally and the heel. What do you notice inside the arch? Now we're gonna press the outer blade and the inner blade, which is harder to do because of the shape of our foot. But then when you press all these surfaces down your feet, where else do you feel this in your body? I feel it in my uh, inner thigh, groin, and lower belly. Now engage the belly and the glutes and press the lower back down. What other subtle feelings do you experience when you're pressing the feet down and the back down? And now just soften without losing this form. Let's take five breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale, inhale four, exhale, Inhale five, pause, exhale back body down to the floor. Now we're gonna do that same internal awareness, but we're gonna use the breath to help us root and rise. Tiny bridges. Inhale, feet root down, hips lift. Engage the glutes to center, pause. Exhale down. Release. Once more, we're gonna do this five times. Inhale, hips rise, everything to center. Exhale down. Release. Inhale, hips rise, squeeze the thighs to center. Exhale. Soften. Two more times. Feet root, hips rise, connect the breath. Exhale. Release, last time, feet, root, hips rise. Exhale down. And let's heel to our feet wide. And we're just gonna do a gentle windshield wipe from knees to the left, center, knees to the right, center. Number two, knees to the left, center and to the right. Upright, number three, knees to the left, 
Well, this time turn your head and look to the right. Center, knees to the right, head to the left. You're noticing the one hip is enjoying this more than the other in terms of an internal stretch. Four, knees to the left. So notice right leg is internally rotating towards the earth, the left leg is externally rotating. Center, knees to the right, head to the left. That internal rotation of the left knee for me, that feels really good. Center, and last one. Knees to the left, head to the right. Center, knees to the right, head to the left. Center, and a counter pose to all the stretching is to bring our knees to chest, little boat. Gently rocking side to side. Option to make it into circles if you're looking for something rhythmic to start your day. One direction, then the other. Egg beaters. And then let's help those knees go as wide as they naturally want to go for a moment. We'll be using the same sensation of opening to be able to fold inward for turtle or tortoise. Let's take three more breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And you can stay passively or gently press the knees open. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Now let's turn it to set up for happy baby. Hands behind the knees. Pulling thighs towards your side body. Pressing the lower back down. And then coming into next level, grabbing the ankles or full happy baby. Inhale one, exhale. Inhale two, exhale. Inhale three, exhale. The last two, we're gonna rock side to side. Inhale four, exhale, and inhale five. Exhale back to center. While we're here, let's take left knee to the earth, and that means I'm going to have to tip a little bit. Center. Right knee to the earth. Oh my gosh, so tight. Center. Left knee to the earth. And actually center. Right knee to the earth. Now we're going to do a less cumbersome variation. Release the right foot to the mat. Left hand, left foot. Imagine bringing that left knee to the earth and I can feel a deep internal rotation of the right leg to make this happen. Center, switch, right hand, right foot, bringing right knee to the earth, oh, and back to center. Let's take the soles of the feet together, pause, and feet to the mat. Arms into cactus, and let's take a big breath. Close the legs, knees to chest, feet in the air, let them dangle for a moment. I'm actually going to roll up the ankles, flex the toes, point and flex. Legs wide, and let's pause here for two breaths. We're going to be using a lot of really open or soft hamstring work. Close the legs, and I'm going to keep right leg in the air, left leg flex and lower. And let's massage just our right leg on its own. Now I'll take the strap to the ball of that right foot. We want to help this hamstring, which ultimately, if you work with the legs, you're helping your back. Now I'll massage there. Just notice if my legs are tight, my lower back is tight. They cannot operate without each other. Everything's interconnected. So stirring that leg. Side to side, both straps on the right hand. Let's take right leg out to the side, left side flexed and grounded. Back to the sky, strap in the left hand and we're gonna take it across the midline. Oh, it doesn't have to go very far. 
Option to go all the way over. Back to the sky. And today we're going to add that other variation I like for the hamstring. Strap back in the right hand and you're pointing to the upper right A corner diagonally. Center, strap in the left hand, upper left corner diagonally. Back to center and release. Little boat. Let's take our feet near once more. Point and flex and right away I feel a difference. Right leg's gonna lower out of the way. Let's massage left leg on its own. Point and flex. Now I'm going to take the strap to help me to the ball of that left foot. And you might gently pull down. You might stir the leg. Both straps in the left hand. Take that leg out to the side. Back to the sky, strap in the right hand across the midline. Back to the sky, diagonal upper left corner, center upper right corner. Back to the sky, get rid of the strap. I'm going to do egg beaters because I really want to work on these hips. And we'll do a quick uh, thread the needle because who doesn't love the benefits? Knees are bent, one fist width apart, right foot flexes onto left knee. I'm going to open that hip, maybe massage the right hip flexor. And your hand, right hand is gently pressing the right knee away, left hand is gently pulling left knee in. There's a kind of a little dance that happens in the hips. So if I'm tight, I might be here, I might take a belt behind the left leg. And shake it out. Other side, feet to the mat, left foot flexes onto right knee, open the gate, gently press that knee away. Option to come deeper, so left hand's pressing left knee away, right hand's bringing right thigh closer, whether you're holding the left foot or the right knee. And shake it out. Let's roll into a ball on our side and pause. Gently pressing upright. Let's come into whichever form of child's pose you like. This is your practice. And then coming into tabletop, we'll do a little cat cow, palms out of the shoulders, knees out of the hips. Really exaggerate that thumb in the air. Oh, it feels amazing when we lower back. And then slowly turn to cat. I feel like I'm always facing away from you. And cow, turn into cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Nice. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Coming back to neutral, we're going to do one more extended child's pose. Reaching out, forehead down. Let's walk our hands to the left. Press your bum and hips to the right. Deep stretch of the right rib cage. Walking back to center. Hands to the right, bum and hips to the left. Back to center, one more extended child's pose. And now we're ready to do our sun salutations. Now, um, here's something we haven't done for a while. Usually there's lots of um, assistive ways to get up, right? As we age our body, the getting up is harder and harder. Here's one if you want. Coming into um, Thunderbolt or Hero. I'm going to tuck my toes and can I come all the way up without assistance? Not everyone's knee is going to do this, but it is something that I try to work on as long as I can. Coming to the back of the mat. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold, swan dive. Now in today's fold, I really want you to pay attention to the, what's happening in the back of your body. Whether there's tension, maybe you can let your head go and stare between your calves. 
I like to bend my knees a little and bring my chest towards my thighs. Half back, plant, and <laughs> walk over here, coming all the way down into Sleeping Cobra. Pick up your heart, press back downward dog. Pedaling. That feels amazing. One more gift to my hamstrings. Maybe you're pressing one leg down, dangling the other. And then switch it out. Left heel down, right heel dangles. Right foot forward, left foot back. Press into that front foot, rise. Hands release, feet together, fold. Notice the fold's getting easier. Arms rise up, hands at heart center. I'm gonna try it where I should have been standing at the front of my mat. Inhale up, <laughs> exhale fold. Half back, plant, lower all the way down. Pick up your heart, baby cobra, press back downward dog. Paddling or alternate heels to the floor. Left foot forward, right foot back, I'm running out of space. Rise, hands release, feet together, fold. Once more, focus on that folding in. Arms to the side, rise, and heart center. We do this side. We do one more on each side. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back. Plant, lower all the way down. Sleeping Cobra, pick up your heart, whatever Cobra you like, and press back downward dog. Option to try to bring those heels to the floor. Right foot forward, left foot back. Press and rise. Hands release. Here's where we're gonna try to stretch that hamstring. My left heel lifts, so I'm able to try to straighten that right leg and fold. Feet together, fold, rise, heart center. One more side. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back, plant, lower down, sleeping cobra. Pick up your heart, baby cobra, press back, downward dog. Left foot forward, right foot back, lift that right heel, pressing into the front left foot and rise. Hands release, feet together, fold, rise, heart center. Nice work. So, because we're gonna be dealing with forward folds, I'm gonna have us grab some blocks. You may not need them. And we're gonna walk, quite often you have to turn your mat or actually turn your mat. We're gonna take the blocks under the shoulders. So all I'm doing is elevating the height of the floor. And touring my, my feet outwards. I like to turn the blades, sorry, the toes in slightly. Anchoring those feet down just like we had that awareness in the beginning. Engage the core. First, we're in half back. If I want to deepen the stretch on my hamstrings, I like to press my bum back and I can feel the deepening and then come forward. It's so subtle you probably can't even see it. Bum press back, come forward. Bum press back, come forward. One more time, bum press back. Option now to take these blocks lower. I'm gonna come into uh, prayer hands, press my bum back, and then come forward. Press my bum back, Woo! come forward. Option to go to the next level down. Hands are facing forward, elbows bend back and fold. Option to grab your ankles or rest your hands on your back. Or there's another variation. You turn your hands facing away and walk them back. And then I'm going to inchworm in. Let's bring these blocks together and give ourselves a supported squat. Nice. Oh, how does that feel? So that's some of the standing forward fold work we've done. Next variation is coming to the mat. This is a lot more attainable for some people, being able to do forward folds on the mat. There are things you can do to help the hamstring. Move back. So, get all the calf hair off. I'm gonna move my bum flesh out of the way. And I'm only gonna walk these feet as wide as it feels good. You're not looking for a strain as my pants fall down. 
finding in your mind's eye, there's um, four points of contact. I feel the bone of my heels, back of my hand, the Achilles or the heel, and I feel the bone of each sits bone. Close your eyes. Think about these points coming out. It's almost like my little tripod base. And if my hands gently rested on the thighs or knees, shoulders are able to relax, your elbows dangle, pull them in just a little, head is stacked, final piece. Let's take five breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale without losing the shape. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three, feel the body softening with the breath. Exhale, now you can slide your hands down your legs as your body starts to melt into this forward fold. I'm not forcing it, I'm letting it happen organically. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And option to grab the feet or you're up here, wherever you're at is where you're meant to be. Inhale, exhale. Now there is a form called uh, dragonfly where you're fully forward fold, but we're not necessarily looking for that. I'm looking for you to have an experience of opening up the back of the body. I'm gonna come back upright, roll up the ankles if this is too much for you. You can also put a folded washcloth under each knee or a towel. I'm gonna inhale, chest up, exhale, chest out. So we'll do a couple cat cows to help with the spine as we continue our journey to forward fold. Cow, chest forward, shoulders back, hollow chest, there's your cat. Cow, cat, cow, cat. Now we're ready to take this forward fold going into the floor, melting back into the earth. Ashes to ashes. Inhale up. Exhale, slide the hands forward. And you want to keep the feet still slightly pointing upwards or outward. Inhale up. Exhale, fold and melt. Inhale up. Exhale, fold and melt. And I'm going to come all the way out. That was enough. Next variation, soles of the feet together. We'll quickly do a little bit of cobbler or bound angle just to help at the hips. I'm going to hold my feet with my left hand, right palm comes to the inner knee and gently press that knee down. Two breaths and you can close your eyes, head is stacked. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, switch hands, right hand holds the feet, left hand is going to gently add a little bit of help to opening this left hip. Two breaths, inhale one. Exhale, inhale two, exhale. So back in the day when you probably first went to yoga, quite often there was this fascination with forward folding from within bound angle. Well, I've heard more and more, the more I read, here's my hip bone, here's my thigh socket, ball and socket. It's impossible to fold sometimes when this is happening. This is the anatomy of my hip. So it's not about flexibility or intent, it's about anatomy. But if I slide my feet forward into diamond, I'm now able to go within myself. And that's kind of the journey we were looking for with the twist. So coming into diamond, soles of the feet together. You might have your elbows on your inner knees. Let's do five breaths here. No forcing. <clears throat> Inhale one. Exhale, inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale, nice long back, inhale four, exhale, and inhale five, yeah, <laughs> exhale upright. One last variation. We're going to make the tortoise shape, but we don't necessarily have to fully express, do the expression. Hands come under, palms up. Some people like to spread the nails and anchor them. Some people like hands down. I like hands up. 
So now we're staring at our feet. We're visualizing the tortoise. We do not have to get our head to our feet. I want you just to feel this beautiful feeling going inwards instead of expressing outwards. Inhale one, exhale. Soften on the exhale. Inhale two, exhale. Inhale three, exhale. Inhale four, exhale. And my final one, I'm gonna, oh, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Inhale five, exhale, come all the way out and roll with those ankles. Nice work. When we take away the expectation of what we are looking for in a pose, I really just want you to enjoy the journey of all the things that you feel or notice in your body while you're doing the poses. Oh, I kind of like this one. This is random. I like how optimistic this deck is. Life loves you. I open my mind and say yes to life. So just showing up, just being open gives the space for something good to happen. If you never accept the invitation, you don't ever click yes, you don't actually show up to the party, how can you say you had a good time? Life is inviting you to experience a whole new level of happiness, healing, prosperity, success, and love. I really like that. Show up to the party, be ready, have your arms open, have your glass ready, it's going to happen. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you, namaste.